If you've ever built an engine, then you certainly have replaced piston rings. But have you ever thought about what goes into making a performance piston ring? Today, we're going to go behind closed doors here at Total Seal, and we're going to show you. These guys make piston rings for some of the most incredible race engines in the world, and that's why they don't let many people inside. Let's take a special trip. So you want to build a piston ring. You start with wire. It's square wire, but it's still wire. Is it tool steel? Is it stainless steel? Is it something more exotic? It all depends on the application. Then you pick the height and width. Depending on what size the ring groove is in your piston, depending on the clearance between your piston and the cylinder wall. You start with the wire and then you turn it into a ring. There are a lot of companies where you can call and order a set of rings and you get, well, whatever they think is a good set of rings. But at Total Seal, if you want a particular top ring, a different second ring, maybe an oddball oil ring, no problem. Tell them what you want. They will put together whatever your combination is. They'll put that in the box and they'll send you exactly what you need. Whether you want one set, a hundred sets, or 500 sets. The machine right now is churning out this piston ring, 4030 bore, one of the most common sizes ever. If you've got a 350 Chevy, a 351 Ford, a four inch bore that's 430, this is the ring you need. Now, interesting to note, one of the things that Total Seal does is they don't make these rings round. They are actually cam shaped. Once they get squeezed into the bore and the ends come together, then they are perfectly round. You can order them to fit, or you can order them a couple of thou over and file fit. They will also make a custom ring size. If you're running in pro stock, if you're running in NASCAR, and you need a ring to fit this specific bore to the thousandth of an inch, they can make that ring. You don't have to file it, you don't have to fit it, you just know when it goes in, it's exactly what it needs to be. They can make thousands, or they can just make 16 for your application. After they get coiled, the rings come into here where they get heat treated. Total Seal does everything in-house. Now, depending on the material of the ring, some of them get coated, and that happens in this building as well. That's the ones that'll show up black. But if you're working with a steel ring, like what we're talking about today, stainless steel, that doesn't get coated. It gets heat treated in here, goes to the next step. Once they've been coiled and heat treated, the rings will come out looking like this. Now it's a matter of setting a gap and setting the profile on the outer edge. That's the next step. After the heat treat, the rings come in and they get put in this machine where the final gap clearance is set. Now, if it's a standard size, it's a standard gap. Maybe you want a file to fit. Well, it makes them a couple of thou small, so you've got that room to mess with. But if you've got an exact size you're looking for, you know the bore, you want an 18,000 10 gap, this machine will do that perfectly. And when it cuts the edges of the ring, it's not cutting them square. It's cutting them so they will be square when the ends come together. You want that gap to be uniform, you don't want the gap to be like this, you want it to be like this when the ring is pushed around. That's what this machine does. On to the next step. Next step, the OD profile of the ring. What do you want on the surface that actually contacts the cylinder wall? Some are taper, some are what's known as napier, depending on the application. In a pro stock engine, for instance, they're gonna be napier, and that's what this machine does. It's like a mini lathe, and what it does is it cuts the outside, the OD of the ring, to get the perfect finish where it meets the cylinder wall. This part's top secret. Don't let Matt know that we were in this room. We talked about the Napier cut that you can put on some of those rings. What exactly does that mean? Let's take a look at a profile, literally at a microscopic level. This is the edge of a piston ring. This is where it sits in the bottom of the groove, the Napier, the flat part comes up to here, and then the ring tapers back. Up here is the top of the ring. Now this ring is a 0.6 millimeter. So you can see it's very precise. But what that does is makes the part that actually contacts the cylinder wall and seals as small as possible. The less it touches the wall, the less drag, the less friction, the more horsepower. The next step, and this is critical with top rings, is to actually lap the surface so you don't have to worry about breaking it in. This machine, in essence, breaks in the piston ring before you put it in the cylinder. Now, this particular ring is a NASCAR ring. It is 0.6 millimeter thick. And even with that small a surface, it's still critical to lap the outside of it so the engine doesn't have to break in on the dyno. It can just be checked out and put right in the race car. One of the things they do here at Total Seal that you won't find anyplace else because this is a patented process is lapping the sides of the ring so that they fit exactly like they should in the groove and it also helps to stop from micro welding. The ring's moving back and forth inside the piston. They'll put them in this machine, they spin, they lap top and bottom, and depending on the application, they can get your rings flat within 50 millionths of an inch. A millionth is a thousandth of a thousandth. That's pretty flat. Here is one before, and here is one after. I hope the camera can see that. This one hasn't been polished. It just came straight out of the machine like that. But lapping the sides of the rings, 
Keeping them working smoothly and fitting perfectly into the piston grooves is key to making horsepower. Are you worried that they can't do yours because you've got a custom sized bore? Don't worry about it. They make the templates in house. Is that your bore size? That your bore size? That your bore size? Holy smokes, that's a big bore size. Whatever you got, they can make it happen here at Total Seal in house. When you get into the upper echelon of motorsport engine building and perfection is required, this is how precise they can get. This machine is exactly like the one we just showed you over there that laps it. If you're wondering what all this is, it's temperature controlled. When they're surfacing the rings, when they're lapping them, it is exactly the same temperature within two degrees. The AC quits, the temperature changes, throw those rings away and start again. That's how precise they are with the machines here at Total Seal. The EDM machine behind me is cutting slots in what's known as a total conform piston ring. Now this is a top ring like you would run in a pro stock engine. It actually has little bitty slots cut on the inside of it that helps the ring be much more flexible because the block is going to grow, it's going to shrink, it's going to twist, it's going to do funky things, and the ring will form right along with the block. So no matter what happens inside the engine, the ring keeps its seal against the cylinder wall. The last step in quality control is what they call the light tight test. You take a finished ring and you put it inside the bore. Obviously you have different bore sizes for different ring sizes. Then you pull the inside up against it, pull it snug, and other than the ring gap up there at the top, if you could see any light sneaking by that ring, it fails. This one's a pass. It's ready to go in the box and be shipped to the customer. Bet you've never seen one of these because Total Seal has the only one there is. This machine does a lot of the processes that we showed you individually. Now the ring has been coiled, it's been heat treated, then it gets loaded into this end. As it moves through the machine, the first step is the end gap. That gets fitted, the machine get, the ring gets washed, it gets cleaned, and it moves on to the next step. The ring gets deburred, the ring gets profiled, the ring gets lapped, and the ring just keeps sliding on through the machine. Down here is the final auto lapping process, and that's for the top and the bottom of the rings to make sure that it's perfectly flat. It gets washed again, it gets dried, and it spits out the end of the machine. When they come out here, there's just one step left. They swing to the machine next door to get laps top and bottom, and then they're ready to go in your race engine. So now you know, the next time you're building an engine, when you open this box, you'll know all the steps it took to produce the piston ring that's inside it.